I speak to you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So happy Pentecost, or happy birthday to the church, is another way to look at it. I'm very glad that you're here with us this morning. Um, I wanted to begin by telling a story that um, I love that's from our family lore. You know, families always have their stories. Um, That really is an example to me of how God's spirit and the winds of God and the breath of God blow in sometimes surprising ways. Um, And if you happen to be on the Um, search committee or the vestry about a year ago when I was interviewing here, um, you actually heard this story because it's one of my very favorite Pentecost stories. So please indulge me by getting to hear the story again. So um, you probably know I have three daughters and um, when my middle daughter, Zesty, was learning to drive, um, one of the things that we always do as a family is we go on a big road trip in the summer to Indiana to visit our families. And it's like a 15 hour road trip, so it's perfect if somebody has a driver's permit because it is a lot of hours in the car of supervised time. And so it's this chance to get some of your hours in and to practice and for me to get a bit of a break because driving for 15 hours is not super fun. So um, a few years ago, Zesty had her permit and um, we were on our way and um, we were on the interstate and you know the speed limits are a little bit wacky and so barreling down the highway, I think at like 75, like you're supposed to be doing, and um, we are heading um, to pass a semi. And so we're on in the passing lane and there's a semi on the right and a ditch on the left and we're getting ready, you know, we're doing what we're supposed to do, we're right where we're supposed to be, and we see coming up in the our lane a traffic cone on the interstate. And it's that moment of, well, gosh, I wonder how this is going to work out. Um, so Zesty starts freaking out, reasonably so, that there's something in the road. And I could tell it was a traffic cone, which in theory you should be able to hit and, you know, all will be well, right? <laughs> and um, so we're barreling down the road and I'm saying to her, you have to commit. Like, you're in this lane. You cannot veer to the right. We cannot go under the semi-truck. You cannot veer to the left. We are not going in the ditch. You cannot slam on the brakes. There is a car behind us. You have to commit. So we are committing, and here we go. And I, in my head, it's like one of those scenes from a movie where everybody in the car is screaming, and you're headed toward this thing. And so we're getting close there and there's the traffic cone and here we go oh gosh I hope this is going to work out and all of a sudden a gust of wind comes and blows that cone right off the interstate into the ditch just as we get there and all was well so like a mile down the road we get to a a rest area of course Zesty pulls off she is sobbing I'm like kind of freaking out a little bit but it worked out and if memory serves me correctly Zesty did not drive again for like a year um (laughs) it was a little traumatic but it did work out right and um what I love about this story is it's one of those examples where We knew what we were supposed to do. We knew what we had to do. We didn't know how it was going to work out, but we committed and we prayed. I think we screamed a little bit, but we did pray and it worked out. Um, It doesn't always work out the way we hope it would work out, right? Like the story does not always have this beautiful, perfect ending and the breath of God is still there. So in this moment, we were on the path we were supposed to be on, and God was on that path with us. I don't believe necessarily that God actually blew the cone out of the way because we weren't supposed to have a wreck that day. But I do believe that no matter what had happened, God was there, and that we were trying to do the right and faithful thing, you know, being a good driver, making good choices, 
trusting that, you know, we'd be okay. And I think a lot of times that's life, right? So the story that we hear from the gospel today, it's the story as we know, Jesus has died. The disciples and friends are gathered in the upper room. It's locked for fear. They are probably screaming a little bit too. Things did not go like they had hoped and thought they might go for the Messiah. Jesus was dead. And there they were. And suddenly Jesus appears before them. They were on the path and God showed up. It was not the pretty path that they wanted. It was not the path of Palm Sunday with Hosanna and the palms and let's welcome the king who has come to redeem the savior of the world. It was the Jesus who suffered and died on the cross, the Christ though who was risen again, who came and blew the breath of life into them and into the world, who said, I'm still with you. God is still with you. And although God and I will be together in heaven, I'm leaving the advocate. You're going to have a friend here with you. You've got a friend in Jesus. And it's the Holy Spirit. And it will be with you no matter where you go or who you are. It is as close as literally the breath that you take. And I think that's a really powerful image, that idea, because we can't live for very long without breathing, right? And if we remember that, you know, the Holy Spirit is God's breath, then every breath we take, we are bringing God into our hearts and our lives, and we are breathing that right back out into the world as well. And what a powerful image that is to envision that and to imagine wherever we are. One of the things that I love about Paul's letter to the people of Corinth today is, or maybe it was the Acts, it talks about all of the people of every age, of all the genders, of all of their abilities. It mentions, you know, the slaves who then were considered not the same as everybody else, not equal, but for God, yes. Everybody counts. Everybody is receiving this spirit. Even those that we might judge are not worthy still receive God's spirit, are still made out of God's love, are still worthy of love, and still deserve love and should claim it. And that's one of those gifts of the spirit that we need to remember, right? We hear this whole litany of the different gifts of the spirit. And some of those things are this call to justice, a call of reminding the world that there are people who are not receiving the love and the care and the agency that they deserve. And so for some of us, our gift is reminding the world that and dragging, you know, some who are less willing along the way. For some of us, it's the gift of wisdom. For some, it's the gift of compassion or love. Each one of us has a way of showing up in the world that is exactly what the world needs. It's why we were created. And I believe that's the same for St. Luke's. I believe that St. Luke's as a community is here for a reason. And it is our purpose to figure out why has God called us to be as community What path are we to be walking as a people? And how do we stay on that path? Even when what we see up ahead doesn't look great, but we look to the left and we see a ditch and we look to the right and we see a semi. And we're thinking, I'm not a fan. But we stay the course because we know we are being true and right by God, and we're being good discerners, and we're listening, and we're praying, and we're paying attention, and we're reading the gospel, and we're coming together in community, and we're continuing to challenge one another about how are we supposed to show up. And so as in the coming year, we're getting ready to do our stewardship campaign this fall, which will be here sooner than we know, and our theme for this year is Growing in God. And I really want us to consider how are we growing in God as individuals, but also as a community? Where are we creating good and fallow ground, 
holy places that we are walking on to allow the abundance of God's graciousness and goodness and care and inspiration help us be good stewards of creation and good justice seekers and lovers of the world. I think that's really important. One thing I do want to point out to you, you know we have the beautiful stained glass here. This very first stained glass here right by the choir pews is a version of the Holy Spirit coming to the apostles. So if you have a few moments after church or if as you make your way back from the altar for um, Eucharist, I encourage you to just stop and take a peek at this beautiful example of these people who had gathered who did not like the way the road was looking in that moment. You know, it looked like ditches, traffic cones, and semis. And yet suddenly Jesus appeared and the Holy Spirit descended upon them and said, don't be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Not only am I with you now, but God will be with you forever. And all will be well. You know I love that phrase. And I want to encourage us to really, as we grow in our faith, to think about why are we here as a people, as a church, and how can we continue to inspire and encourage the world to acknowledge that God is with us and to live into the word of God as good disciples and stewards of all that is. Amen.